Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul, United Church of Christ, Keokuk. Would the children come forward to help me with the children's sermon? I see we have one in Lederhosen there. And uh, it reminds me that I'll be wearing Lederhosen at Kirkenfest. If you don't come for any other reason, you should come to see me wear Lederhosen. I look totally ridiculous, but it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, move over just a little bit. I'm a little wider than most of you are. <clears throat> okay. Now I have a question for you. Do you sometimes have friends who are sick? Uh huh. And do you let them know that you care about them? Mm hmm. Even though they're not there in all of the things that you do, you let them know 
Sometimes you send a card. Sometimes you call them up, and what people do most of all these days is text one another. Mm -hmm. but, but you'll get into that when you get further into cell phones, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you all know what a cell phone is? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you all wish you had one? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one of the things that seems almost essential these days. Sometimes um, when I teach people, I tell them they're androids. Do you know what an android is? Yeah, well, that's, that's part of what's uh, in, a, in a cell phone is the programming, but also I say they're cyborgs because they're part machine and part people. Their cell phone is always there. Have you noticed that? When we care about people, we let them know. And it helps when you get a card or something when you're sick. And I just want to ask you about somebody here. I'm just going to pick one person. Do you know Dwight Handyside? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Very good. Now, he is in a nursing home over in uh, Menden. And um, it's a North Adams home. And uh, I'll bet you he'd like a card. I'll bet you he'd like a card. You going to send him a card, maybe? Yeah. Possibly? I saw him the other day, and he did a lot of work while he was in the church here before he went to the nursing home. Uh, he served on a lot of stuff and uh, did a lot of, made a lot of contributions here. I just want to remind you that he's still there, and he says that uh, if he could, he'd be with us. And uh, he wants to say that he remembers all of us, and uh, we would like to say we remember him too. So when we have people who are not with us in worship, for whatever reason, um, sometimes we can send them a card to let them know that we remember them and comfort them. Sometimes we can um, sometimes call them up. Sending a card is a really nice thing to do when somebody is sick or something like that. So, one person remembers Dwight. Now, you all kind of know, you all know Dwight, kind of, don't you? Because he said hello through me. I went to visit him. Yeah, he said hello, and he wishes he could be here. So when you know somebody who's ill or somebody who's not here or somebody who needs to just hear from you, send a card or something. Um, it means a lot to know that you're remembered. All right, let's join together in a little prayer, shall we? Lord, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can minister. I'll just think you said that to one another. To one another and help. And help one another. One another. Through, through love, love by sending cards by sending cards and comfort. Amen. Very good. Thank you for that amen. Okay, you can go back. Our heart is, of course, always with the folks who are not with us because of one reason or another. Um a hospital stay or a nursing home or something like that. Where our heart is is pretty important. Um, I once talked to uh, somebody uh, at SCC who, uh, he, he was an athlete and he said that he played ball and that uh, he just could not get uh, pitch into the strike zone at all. And I said, well, put your heart where the strike zone is and you'll probably hit it because you got to focus on things. We focus too. Our focus is on what we're doing in relation to the church. Our focus is on our mission. Person who has heart in what they're doing has a complete focus in it and they really try to do what they need to do in order to gain the goal. And the Apostle Paul was certainly like that, wasn't he? He said that he'd run the race with all his heart. And having done all, 
he stood because he knew that he'd put his whole heart into it. And so also God asks each of us for our whole heart. Ask for our whole heart. Ask for our full concentration. Where our heart is, that's where our faith is, that's where our love is. Now, some people have their heart, and I spoke to the kids a little bit about this because uh, it's so much part of our life, uh, in Facebook or whatever text that they're sending, you can tell. And, and it's a good illustration of, of focus. Because in some cities, they're padding overhead projections. Do you know why they're padding overhead projections? Because people are scrolling on their cell phone and they're running into things. They're hurting themselves, so you have to put padding on overheads and that sort of thing. I had to step out of the way of some people who were scrolling one day. All of them were scrolling, and I had to step out of the way of that group because uh, they were scrolling through their phones. And immediately what occurred to me is that people could be like lemmings, you know? That old 1950s Disney movie where they had these little creatures that just ran in mass to cliffs and uh, jumped into the sea, just jumped right over the cliff. Well, of course, that was kind of a distortion because uh, they don't actually do that in that way. They're just migrating. And actually, for the film, they had taken some of them and thrown them in the water, you know, just to give you the idea that they were running over the cliff just madly. But it reminded me of the, uh, the scrolling and the, and the padded things and how people have their whole heart right in that and all their concentration. As a matter of fact, Illinois has a law in relation to that that you're not supposed to be on your cell phone when you're going down the road. And I think of it sometimes when I'm in Illinois and I'm, I'm on my cell phone and driving, that that's not the right thing to do. Um, but nevertheless, it's distracted driving because your thoughts, uh, your, your concentration, uh, they're actually someplace else. So I thought to myself, well, while I was preparing the sermon, I thought, well, I guess, I think, you know, I'll have a look to see if anyone has ever actually fallen off a cliff uh, while they were scrolling. And there are really quite a few stories of people who have uh, fallen uh, off of cliffs and so forth while they were scrolling through their cell phone. So there you are, scrolling along, all of a sudden you're at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, you know. It's, it's just uh, because your mind is some other place. Your mind and your concentration are some other place, but God asks for our whole heart. God asks for our whole heart, not just part of us, but our whole heart. It's important how much of our heart is in things. Well, we say to ourselves, I'll tell you what, God, I'll just give you part of my heart. It's kind of like when you're having a conversation with someone, and uh, all of a sudden there's an alert on their cell phone, and they uh, just start scrolling through their phone while you're talking to them. Anybody ever have that experience? Mm -hmm. well, we're kind of like that. Some, I'm glad they're cell phones because they really serve to illustrate a lot of this. Uh, I have had that happen quite often. And uh, for us, when we're distracted by things and God is calling us to serve and have our whole heart in our mission and service, uh, sometimes we're like that too. It may not be a cell phone, but it may be something else that's distracting us. And we have part of our heart over there and part of our heart with God. And we may be listening to God or we might not be listening to God. And in the UCC, one of our sayings is that God is still speaking. So God is speaking, but we're not paying attention. We, our attention is somewhere else, but God wants our whole heart. God is not satisfied with just part of our heart. God is not satisfied with just part of our attention. God wants our whole heart. God wants everything in our attention. Not a divided type of thing. Because... The Bible says, you can serve two masters, you can be divided in your loyalty, but you will hate one master and love the other because your attention is divided. And it takes a lot of effort for your attention to be divided, divided in that way. And as a matter of fact, um, 
that energy is finally given to one or the other, is what it amounts to. So God wants your whole heart, not just part of it. Sometimes when I was doing substance abuse uh, counseling, uh, I would be in these groups of maybe about 20 or 30 people, and sometimes they would side talk. And it would take at least three times as much energy to get your point across while someone was side talking. And I was wondering how I could eventually get things quieted down without offending anybody. So I finally settled on something. I said, if I can't conduct group because someone is side talking, I'll just ask the, mo the noisiest one to leave. And then after that, I'll ask the second noisiest one to leave. And uh, after that, it seemed like things settled down pretty well. I, don't, I think I only had to ask one noisy person to leave before things settled down. And the, the reasoning, of course, was that uh, it was too distracting. So in fact, it is very difficult for us if we're distracted by something. So the matter of the heart is something that's very important because our full attention needs to be on God. God's full attention has been on us. And I said something about people who'd walked over cliffs because they were scrolling on their phone. Well, it is a matter of life and death for us too that our attention be on God. God's full attention was on us, with our full attention on God, we're going to walk in the direction of life as opposed to the direction of death and darkness. You see, when you're distracted, that's when it, it's possible for you to be tempted. All it takes is a little distraction. Just a little distraction, you, can, you kind of lose focus, and then that path you're not supposed to be walking uh, looks a little more attractive because your attention is not on God. But God's attention was fully on us when God sent Jesus into the world. Listen to what we see there. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. They were distracted into evil. You remember the serpent distracted Eve into evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he does has been done through God. God's Son was sent into the world. God's Son was sent into the world so that we could follow the path of life. The path is open to us. It's a little narrower there than that, than that broad path, that broad path of being distracted into other things that may seem more attractive at the moment or more important at the moment. It's a little narrower path, but it's a path that leads to life. God's attention was fully focused on us. That's why that cross is there so prominent in churches because it reminds us that God sent his son into the world to die on our behalf, to suffer on our behalf because of our sin, because of our inattention. God's attention is, is focused through the cross into the life and forgiveness that God gives us. God wants our whole heart. God wants our focus to be there throughout our lives all of our heart there, all of our heart in the sacrifice that Jesus made and the cross which is hanging there, which represents that sacrifice. 
what more focus could Jesus have on us than to have given his life on our behalf? Because of that, we can give our whole heart and our whole focus to God. If Jesus gave his life on our behalf, Jesus was fully focused on us. And we can give our heart fully to God and have a full focus on God through the work of the Holy Spirit. And I have our lives dedicated to God and God's work and God's mission in this world. And nothing is more important than that for us when we give our whole heart to God. Now, people sometimes want to give their hearts partially to God. Well, I'll give this part. I'll give this part to God, but no more than that. Because the other parts, well, I've got those dedicated to something else. God is not satisfied with that, as God was not satisfied with anything but, but full love in redeeming us. Only a full love in God's heart could redeem us, and only a full love is what God is satisfied with from us. Giving our hearts totally to Jesus, accepting the forgiveness that Jesus has. But you see this, this rich guy? He wanted to just give part of himself. In the story that we read in the scripture, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, of course, said, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, um, so you know how to follow the commandments. Oh, the guy must have been very happy because he said, I followed them all. I have followed them all from my youth. Well, Jesus said, there's only one thing left. Just give up all your wealth, give it to the poor, and come follow me. And his face fell. He thought he had it made. But his face fell. Now, this doesn't mean that we should just all of a sudden give everything we have to the poor. But Jesus was making a point with this extreme example. Because his wealth was more important than following Jesus. That's what Jesus uncovered. He wanted part of his heart with his wealth, part of his heart with Jesus. And unless he were willing, you know, he may have said, well, look, you know, I'll dedicate all of my wealth to helping the poor. And that's what I'll dedicate my life to and follow you. But he didn't say that. His face fell and he went away. He went away sad because he had great wealth. And that's why Jesus speaks of how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven if their heart is only partially given to God. But Peter said, I've left everything to follow you. We've left everything to follow you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, no one who has left home or sisters or brothers or mother or father or children or fields to me for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them persecution, possibly. In the age to come, eternal life, they'll have life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. In other words, if you're willing to put everything toward the service of God. If you're willing to put everything toward the service of God and follow God's command, then God has your whole heart. Jesus wants our whole heart. Christ is central to our lives. Christ is the first priority, not the second, not the third, not the fourth, not the fifth or the sixth, 
but the first priority. All of our will is directed toward Jesus being the first priority. We leave nothing behind. We leave nothing in reservation. We direct all of our energy toward Jesus. And then our feet are set on the path of eternal life. Our, seat, our feet are set on the path of what really lasts. Last uh, Sunday, Joel talked about the way in which we should store up our treasure in heaven as opposed to where rust and decay can take it. We give our whole hearts to Jesus because that is the only thing that lasts. The love that we have um, through God. Now, sometimes it seems in our society that Jesus is not the central thing. I remember the days in which it was hard to get gas on Sunday. Anybody remember those because all the gas stations were closed? I remember the days when uh, Wednesdays were church nights and you didn't schedule anything on uh, Wednesday night. But because of all kinds of priorities, I suppose it's not that way anymore. But we ourselves can make Jesus central to our lives. We ourselves can do that. I remember also, you know, what's important, that's what's going to take your time. I remember a writer that I had scheduled to speak at a university at one time. He was a science fiction writer. And this writer had been confronted by a teacher who said, you know, I've always been a writer, but if I had your, ti your kind of time, I could write. Well, the, he responded, the, my writer friend responded, well, if I had your kind of time, I could be a teacher, you know. Stephen King, uh, actually, when he started to write, he was dedicated to it, and he was writing sitting next to the laundry room in a, in a, in a cheap apartment, but he kept on writing, and uh, eventually became famous in relation to that, all kinds of uh, horrible stories. I still remember seeing the movie Pet Cemetery, and I could not get through the whole thing. It was just uh, actually terrible. But nevertheless, where your heart is, that's where your effort is going to go. If your heart isn't there, if your whole heart isn't in it, then your effort is not going to go in that direction. We can't wait until we're less busy. We can't wait until we have more resources. We have to begin thinking now about our mission and focusing on our mission. Now, I've, in relation to the work that I do here, I have... Um, about some areas that, that are in a kind of a, a template for our, our future church growth. And I'm going to uh, begin to disseminate those and, and uh, explain those to people. They're very important. They're like discipleship, stewardship, things like that, things we can put our heart into uh, as we go along and, and redevelop as a church. But the most important thing to remember is that what, is, what our hearts are into, that's what's going to prosper. We're like athletes. If our heart isn't in it, we're never going to win. Our heart's got to be in it absolutely, completely, fully. If we're going to win in doing God's work, well, our hearts have to be completely there. Even though we experience troubles, even though we experience challenges, God is sometimes testing us and saying, is their heart going to waver? But our hearts won't waver because Christ is our future. There isn't any other future. That's where our life is. And so we will work together. And in doing so, we will have the joy of bringing others to the life which we have in Christ. Amen. You have been listening to St. Paul United Church of Christ, 2030 Plank Road, Keokuk. Join our worship service at 10 a.m. with fellowship hour immediately following. Until next week, may God bless.